Miss Ashworth, I was worried sick about you. Are you all right? How did you get back? I walked. You saw something terrible in that fog, didn't you? I saw a monster. Miss Ashworth, I need to ask you something. Can I come in? I'm in the bath. Is it something important? Yes, very important. The fate of the world depends on it. You can come in, if you promise you're not a lesbian. A lesbian? I told you I had a boyfriend, Miss A. Both girls shouldn't get embarrassed of each other. Where do you get ideas like that? I don't know. It seems everyone is gay these days. Now, that's okay with me, don't get me wrong. But I don't necessarily want a lesbian to stare at my boobs, if you know what I mean. Miss A, if I want to stare at some boobs, I'll take my top off and look in the mirror. Right. Come in then. I'm cooking up some pancakes. What do you like on yours? We've got strawberry jam, maple syrup and chocolate spread. Is that the reason you're interrupting my bar? But of course. The world will just cease to exist if you don't let me know this. Well, that'd be fine by me. I don't really care about the world. And I want blueberries on mine. Blueberries? Where am I going to take blueberries from? Don't know. You asked me. And I just really like blueberry pancakes. You're impossible, Miss A. What jam did you say it was? Strawberry. That'll do. I'm so full up. Where did you learn to cook like that? My dad taught me. He was the king of pancakes. I'll wash up, if you like. I can do that. I like washing up. You do? Really? Really. I'm a good girl. And this is my treat for you, after all. Looks like we've got the rain back. I almost felt like something was missing. Do you think it will ever stop? I mean, what if it doesn't? Then it will rain for a million years. I'm not sure I get it. What's the point of that? What did you say it was called again? For the third time. Social network. Why is it so difficult to remember? I just find the whole idea really stupid. Why would I want to tell people that I'm having a shit day? So maybe you'd feel better for sharing it with your friends. But I don't have any friends. No, you wouldn't with this attitude. You, on the other hand, seem to have 274 of them. How is that even possible? Well, what can I say? I'm very likeable. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, they come every time you play the piano? Yeah, I don't really play that often. Mostly when I feel really sad. Maybe I actually play more often than I thought. You sado. I know a song written just for you. Remind me to play it to you sometimes. It'll cheer you up. It's called All Flowers in Time Bend Towards the Sun. Flowers, yeah. Of course they do. Do you know it? It's written by Jeff Buckley. He would have been bigger than Cobain, you know. I never heard of him. 
Mm. He probably didn't. He drowned in Mississippi when he was only young. I've created a profile for you. Maybe now you'll learn how to use it. What am I gonna do with it? Just look for people you know. Invite them, talk to them. It's a good way to keep in touch. Maybe you could refresh some old friendships? I don't know. I can't think of any names. I probably never really cared enough about anybody. How about people you went to school with? Your old colleagues from work? Nope. Friends. Zero. At least they're right about one thing. I'll add you later. That'll be a start. I made us some coffee. Sit down and talk to me for a moment. I'm having a bad day. Could do with some company. Sure. Coffee sounds great. What's wrong, Mitzi? Well, I'm not sure how to get started with this thing. I've been thinking about it the last few days and I just don't seem to get any good ideas. Maybe I've been a fool all along, deluding myself that I could find where that sick bastard is hiding. Maybe I can help you. I have lots of free time, you know? Last night, I made this, well, map. I made a map. This is our building, all four floors. There are two flats on each floor. You really want to help me? That's so great, Miss A. How will I ever pay you back for this? I'll think about it later. But we haven't found him yet, have we? No. But I feel that together we stand a chance. So, let's talk about it. What do we know already? I know that rude, bald guy lives in flat six. I told you about him, didn't I? I think so. It's that guy who came complaining about the noise, right? Right. That's Brian Palmer. Let's mark him on the map. What else do you know about him? Not much. Wait. I remember some woman lived there with him. I've not seen her for ages. They must have split up. Could he be our potential suspect? No. That jerk? Never. Fine, I'll trust you on that. I guess we can count him out. I'm pretty sure one of the flats is empty. Hmm. Which one? I think it's the one on the first floor. There's an odd married couple that lives next door. Yeah? What do you know about them? Well, the man is called Joe Davis. He seems nice, quiet type. But I heard him shouting a couple of times, and he sounded almost like a different person. Like a madman, you know? I gather they must have some serious relationship problems, and they're trying to sort them out behind closed doors. It's impossible to hide this personal dirt from your neighbours. I know it's none of my business, but I can't just plug my ears and pretend I don't hear what's going on there. And the wife? Ivy Davis. Or is it Sophie? I can't remember now. Anyway, she's very polite, always says hello when we pass by each other in the hall. She's one of those size double zero ladies. So skinny you could easily take her for a coat rack. A walking skeleton. I bet she only eats a leaf of lettuce a day, or nothing at all. She looks quite ill, actually. Anything else? They used to have a cat, Lucifer. I often wonder what happened to the poor little chap. We can cross off our flat, of course. Yep, 
Good. That leaves us with only seven flats. Also, there's an old man in flat five, right opposite the Brian's place. There are strange noises coming from flat seven. Interesting. What kind of noises? Like screaming, explosions, guns. Then there are threats and insults shouted very loudly at someone. Hmm. I think I might know what's going on there. But it's worth checking anyway. Do you know the person who lives in that flat? No, I don't. It's the top floor. I have no business going up there. All I know is what I overheard from neighbors' gossips. Sometimes I hear a dog barking on floor one. First floor? Well, you said one of the flats was empty. Yes, which means the owner of the other flat keeps a dog. I hate dogs. Huh. Tell me about it. Noisy, smelly creatures. Can you imagine the eye of Adam being a dog lover? Can't see why not. In that case, it might be worth looking into. There's a woman with a baby living upstairs. Her husband? I'm not sure. I hardly ever see her. When I do, it's usually in the hall, when she's pushing a pram with a baby inside. She always has tons of shopping hanging from it. I nearly asked her once if she needed help to carry it upstairs. And? I hesitated for a moment, and by the time I offered, she grabbed the baby and the shopping bags and marched off upstairs. Okay, I think that's all that we know at the moment. a pram. This reminds me, I found an old baby pram in my bedroom among all the stuff. Do you have kids, Miss Ashworth? You never talk about it. Why do you want to know? I'm just curious. I like meeting new people and getting to know them. I can tell there's some dark secret you've been keeping to yourself for a long time. You might feel so much better if you share it with someone. You don't want to know about my problems. I just really want us to be friends. I swear to God I could do with one. I'm not very good at friendships. I thought that was rather obvious. Friends should trust each other, you know. I told you about Jack and everything else. Why can't you just do the same? You told me about Jack because you wanted to. I didn't force you, did I? My pro- Private stuff is nobody else's business. Why does everyone want to remind me of this all of a sudden? Isn't ten terrible years of suffering enough to let go and never bring it up again? Even... Even for me? Miss Ashworth, I, I'm so sorry. Your mug, it was an accident. You know, just leave it. I don't even care anymore. Who is it? Flowers. Whoa.
What... what's that in your other hand? Go away. Leave me alone.
Otherworld. Not a single sound reaches my ears. Well, maybe it's this fuck you. I stick my head into this shit. This happens. Give me. Is that you behind my back, Mitzi? Miss Ashworth, I thought... I thought you were dead. I saw that man hit you right in the head. Me? Dead? No. No, I'm a tough old girl. You can't kill me that easily. Stop asking stupid questions. We have no time for that. Let's calm down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I can do that. What's this? Duct tape? Yeah, he had loads of that stuff. Maybe we can break this tape if we pull really hard? It won't hurt to try. It's pointless. We're completely wrapped in this damn tape. We're cocoons. Stuck in a web. Waiting to be eaten. But where's the spider? He's gonna play with us first, isn't he? Pull yourself together and stop talking shit. I can't think properly. How about those lockpicks that you always carry with you? Stop asking stupid questions and pull with me. But we aren't locked in a room, are we? We're wrapped in duct tape in case you forgot. How is a lockpick gonna help here? I don't know. It's probably sharp. You could use it to cut this tape. Well, even if that was the case, I can't reach it anyway. So let's forget the lockpicks and think of something else, all right? Did he hurt you? That bastard packs a hell of a punch. I've got a bit of a headache, but I think I'm all right. What about you, Mrs. A? Me? Fresh as a daisy. But I'll feel better after we've dealt with this unpleasant guest of ours. Do you think he's going to rape us? No, he is not. Don't worry, I'll figure something out. Let's just wait for him to come back. Sooner or later they always make a mistake. Miss A, I'm sorry I had upset you. I shouldn't have pushed you so hard. And I'm sorry about the mug too. It's all right. Water under the bridge. Let's use this sharp knife to cut the tape then, shall we? What? You've got a knife? Yeah, but I'm sorry. I just remembered I can't reach it. So let's forget the knife and think of something else, yeah? Oh, you are a nasty piece of work, Miss A. I really believed you had a knife. You shouldn't joke about it, you know. It's cruel. It wasn't a joke. I lied to you. And you lied about the lockpicks, didn't you? You don't really have them. Who are you to call me a liar? I can't reach the damn lockpicks. It's the truth. Really? Yes, but clearly my word isn't enough. You know what? I'll show you when this is over. If we're not chopped into little pieces, packed in plastic shopping bags and dumped in the trash, that is. Maybe it won't come to that. He might just throw our bodies in the river. Or bury them in the woods. Maybe there won't be any shopping. Always an optimist. So, any ideas? Not that many, really. 
None at all, actually. I'm sorry. And you? What do you think we should do? We should kill the fucker. With what? We're tied up. Are you going to headbutt him to death? I will, if there's no other way. Come on, there's got to be something more sensible we can do. I'm not gonna die here. Not like this. Maybe together we can pull this pipe off the wall? How is that exactly going to help us? Stop asking stupid questions and pull with me. Great, that's just what we needed. A cold shower. I used to like flowers, you know. Like everyone else. Or even more. There was this guy. I should have told him from the start I wasn't interested. But I didn't. Maybe I was interested. In a way, probably. Flattered would be a better word. It was ten years ago. I can hardly even remember him now. He did that thing every week. Because he knew Eric was at work and I was in the flat alone. So every Friday night I'd get flowers delivered by a courier. Who's Eric? Your partner? My husband. He was a taxi driver. Worked every weekend. And I was still on maternity leave. Zoe, our little daughter, was only six months old at the time. Well, five months and twenty-eight days exactly. She would be eleven now. Anyway, that one Friday evening's courier had delivered a big bouquet of the most beautiful lilies. Usually, I would have thrown them away, but I really liked them, somehow. They were extraordinary, absolutely stunning, and looked very expensive. I stood there looking at them, mesmerized. I didn't even hear the phone ring at first, but then I heard it loud and clear, as if I'd woken up from a strange dream, and I knew it was him calling. Send me anything. I... I couldn't resist. You're all I can think of lately. It kills me that I can't see you. I would give anything. I'd better stop here. You know very well how I feel about you. I have a family now. I'm sorry, but I can't see you again. We've managed to patch things up with Eric, and there's Zoe. We have to try and make it work. Our daughter needs both her parents. So, yeah, I can't just run away with you. Life's not a film with Julia Roberts, you know? But sometimes doing crazy things can change your life for better. Do you really want to be that woman who in 10 years time realizes that she's wasted the best time of her life living with a man that she never loved? I... Look, I love my husband. I can take care of Zoe. I told you before. I'll be a good father to her, if you want. It doesn't work like that. You don't know anything about children. I'll learn. Give up? Honestly. I could never give up on you, Susan. Come on. Don't be like that. You're breaking my heart. It's too complicated. I don't even know you that well. Look, I'm an honest man. What you see is what you get. We might not know each other that well, but you can't deny that there's this great chemistry between us. It's as if we were meant to be together. Listen.
Listen, I have to go. It's getting late. Wait. Yeah? When I call you again next Friday, you will answer the phone, won't you? No. I'm sorry, but this is over. Goodbye and good luck. I guess I should do something about these flowers. I'd really like to keep them. But I don't want Eric to know I have a secret admirer. Now I can tell Eric that Mandy had brought them for Zoe. It seems like a pretty innocent lie. I doubt he'll notice anyway. I hope you're dreaming about something nice, my little star. Eric must have come home early. But why? You're back early. Is something wrong? Yeah. Well, let's think about it for a minute. Is something wrong? Yes, Susan, there is. Didn't you watch television? Listen to the radio? Didn't talk to anyone today? What? what happened? Was there an accident? Yes, you could call it that. But if a guy walks into a busy restaurant during dinner service and detonates a bomb strapped to his chest, then I think the term terrorist attack is more fitting. There's chaos spreading all through the city. Everyone's panicking. The police and army are everywhere. But you don't even care, do you, Susan? Of course I care. I had no idea. You should pay more attention to what's happening to this country, Susan. I could have died, and you wouldn't even know. Did you get hurt? No, not really. But the cab smashed quite badly. I was just there when it happened. There was smoke. Clouds of dust so thick you couldn't see a fucking thing. So I stop, and all of a sudden some van hits me from the back. I hear my passenger screaming and shouting, and there's blood on the rear window. And just then another car drives right into us, and we're all stuck in that mess. Nobody knows what's going on, but imagining this might just be the end of the world. But no, it was some geezer with a bloody bomb. They closed all the main streets, in case there's more of them. What time was that? Around 7pm. I spent another two hours trying to get someone to tow the damn cab to the garage. Would you believe? Our insurance doesn't even cover this sort of thing. You should have called me. I did. Four times. You didn't answer. I must have been... Yeah, yeah. You were busy with the baby. Every time it's the same old story. We've still got that wine in the fridge, haven't we? Get some glasses, Susan. I need a drink. All right. I'll get the glasses. You get the wine. But are you sure you don't want to take a shower first? No. I just need a drink. I can wash later. Shit. Are you gonna get that? If it's Jerry, tell him I'm not here. 
I don't want to talk to them tonight. Hello? It's me again. I'm sorry, but I had to hear your voice again. I love you, Susan. Susan? You still there? Please, say something. Anything. I'm... I'm sorry, but he's not home. I... Excuse me? He's... At work, isn't he? He's not home yet, Jerry. Why don't you try again in the morning? He won't be back till late, right? Is that Jerry? I'm not here, just blow him off. Susan, I'm so sorry. Should I hang up? Have you gone mad? This could have been a disaster. How was I supposed to know? Where is he now? In the other room. I can't talk. Just wanted to say... Just wanted to say that you've let me down. I'd never forgive you, or myself, if he found out like this. He didn't. I'll tell you one thing, lover. Yeah? What is it? Don't call me again. I won't answer it next Friday. Please, Susan. This could be the start of something beautiful. Something beautiful? You can't start something beautiful with lies and deceit. Bye. Then the arguing started. It slowly grew into something bigger, something horrible. Stupid remarks and old grudges mixed with alcohol turned into some sick exchange of pointless accusations. It wasn't the first time we argued, but it was the last. Just look at the state of this place. It's a mess! Listen, I know you're with Zoe all day, but it's not like she's still a little baby. She's six months already. You'll have to organize your day a bit better and get things done. If other women find time, why can't you? Don't be nasty. I'm doing all I can. Are you really? Okay, doing all you can. You obviously care about your husband. Coming home after a hard day's work, he's gonna be hungry. But wait, where's his dinner? Oh, uh, let me guess. You didn't make it because you were too busy changing nappies and singing and playing and washing. Yeah, I think so. And I'm not going to feel guilty about it. If you'd spent more time with our daughter yourself, you'd know how important these things are. So pardon me, there's no dinner for a hard-working husband. From now on, he's gonna have to cook for himself. Because, you know what? The wife is working just as hard, and she's really tired of being treated this way. She better gets used to it, cause this is just the start. There's gonna be some changes around here. I'm fed up of being pushed around by you. I put the bread on our table, don't I? I'm the man in this family! I will make the rules, and I'll get the respect I deserve. How can you talk to me like this? You're treating me like dirt. Didn't you forget something? I'm your wife. I'm the mother of your child. Doesn't that mean anything to you at all? A wife and a mother? Why don't you start acting like one? When was the last time you showed me that you care about me? All you ever talk about is the baby. I love her to bits, I swear I do. But I want to have a wife too. When was the last time you even kissed me? I'm not even talking about sex. Oh, I knew it. Is that what bothers you so much? Is it? Of course it fucking bothers me. Does it not bother you that we never have time for each other? Look, we are new parents. It's always hard. All couples go through it, I heard. Well, fuck this. I heard different. 
Eric, you're drunk. Get off my case, all right? Look, I understand you've had a very bad day, but it's not my fault that the bomb had gone off and your car was damaged. I'd really like you to calm down now. I'm sure we can sort everything out. We always do. Well, that's what you think. Yeah? And what do you think, Eric? What do I think? So it matters all of a sudden what I think. Well, I'll tell you. Sure. I think you're lazy, Susan. You do nothing all day, while I keep working my ass off to provide for this family. I think you're trying to shift the responsibility on me, like you always did. I think you use the baby as an excuse for everything. And I think you're an asshole. How dare you accuse me of such things? It only takes one look at the flat to see it's all true. Let me go. I have to check on Zoe. I left a window open in her room. She might be cold. That's right. Just walk away. That's all you do, Susan. You can never finish anything. If there's one thing I don't want to finish, it's this stupid conversation. Why not? Are you afraid that I actually might be right? Are you scared of facing the truth? I'm sure Zoe's fine. It's the hottest summer we've had in years. It'll be good for her to have some fresh air in there. Won't you agree? I... I guess... Fine. Never mind. I'm done talking to you. Of course you are. That's what you always do, isn't it? You run out of arguments, you stop talking to me, then you lock yourself in the bathroom and fucking cry. I'm sick of repeating the same old thing over and over again. Then why won't you give me a break, for God's sake? You're acting like I've done something terrible. I don't even know what your problem is. Is there something you're not telling me, Eric? You'd know if you listened to me. But you never listen to me, do you? Not to a single word I've ever said! Right, here we go. It's not you, it's the alcohol speaking. I shouldn't be taking any of this seriously. I know that tomorrow you'll be apologizing to me for it. It was just a couple of glasses and you had some too! I'm not drunk! I wish I was. Maybe then I could laugh at this shitty life. I'd not care so much. That's a good one. You really care so much, Eric. You should get a medal or something. I thought you said you weren't gonna talk to me no more. You are full of shit, Susan! Full of shit! Why don't you look at yourself, you idiot? So I'm an idiot now, am I? You're... You keep picking on me for nothing. No, this was coming, and you know it, Susan. If you're so unhappy with me, then what the fuck are you still doing here? Pack your bags and leave me alone. You're throwing me out. This is my fucking flat! I worked my fucking ass off for seven years to buy it! I'm not going anywhere! I haven't done anything wrong! Of course not! Because you're fucking perfect, aren't you? That's not what I said. Well, if you're so perfect, yeah, then why are we here now, fighting? This is all messed up. You're behaving like a five-year-old? What the hell is wrong with you? You, Susan! You always knew which strings to pull. To tip me over the fucking edge! Stop it! Stop it, Susan. I've only just started. We should finally say to each other what we really think, right? We didn't even notice that outside the storm had started. I was so absorbed in that stupid fight that I forgot all about the open window. Anyway, and the flowers. Those fucking flowers. Right there, by her bed. She had some rare allergy to pollen, but we couldn't have known that. How were we supposed to know? It's rare. She started coughing, and 
choking. The next time we saw her, when we found her, she, she was. After two days of what seemed like a narcotic dream, Eric had gone out and never came back again. They found him nearly a week later. He drank himself dead in the woods. I nearly didn't recognize him when I saw him in the morgue. It really was a hot summer. He looked bad. Miss Ashworth, I... Thank you for telling me that. Now I understand. I understand why you're so sad all the time. <laughs> What do you want from us? Are you deaf? Mitzi, let me handle this. Let us go right now, you moron. Mitzi. Leave her alone. Don't you dare. No. Take me instead. Take me. friend. I... I will. What? What's going on? You're letting me go? Just like that? Where's my friend? What have you done to her? want me to do? I don't understand!
stand still, Mitzi. I'm gonna be right back with a knife, and I'll cut you down, all right? Don't look, Mitzi. 